Our dearly beloved, we are gathered here today for another episode of Champs Drink Champs podcast. And I hope you all listen to General Conference this weekend because <laughs> that's what that just reminded me of. <laughs> what the heck? I never, ever know how you're going to introduce this. I know. I don't know where that one came from, but like randomly that came into my head today. Like, dearly beloved, we are gathered here today. And I was like, what the heck? And Did you like, watch conference? No, of course not. <laughs> that is yes, funny. everybody. Welcome to the episode. I'm very excited about this episode, actually. Me too. Um, but before we jump into it, what have you been up to? Listen, I've been down such a conspiracy rabbit hole with this whole hurricane stuff. And I finally, today, I was like, okay, Taylor, like, we are cutting ourselves off. We're done with conspiracy theories for a minute. (laughs) Like, shit's really messed up. I feel so bad for North Carolina. I feel so bad for Florida with this giant, never-been-seen-before hurricane coming. So that's what I've been up to, mostly, is this (laughs) rabbit hole. School also started again yesterday, so that's been intense. My classes are very, very, very intense for this term. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Damn, that's some negative stuff, girl. (laughs) (laughs) Here's a positive thing. I taught my last class of the summer at Solitude on Saturday. It was absolutely beautiful. Went on a hike after I saw the mountain that we climbed and holy shit, we are so badass because seeing that mountain again was really like, oh my God, we did that really cool. (laughs) Um, so yeah, there's my, there's my positivity. Oh my gosh. Did we have, we haven't even podcasted since our last race. We haven't, huh? No. So you guys, we climbed another mountain. Well, Um, you guys did. I got sick. Taylor did not make it, (laughs) but that's okay. She will make it next year. Yeah, I will make it next year. I don't know if I got food poisoning or if I had like a stomach bug. It hit me about 1 a.m. in the um, hotel room. If you know anything about me, you know I have like a poop phobia. So to have diarrhea with (laughs) three other people in the room was very stressful. I had diarrhea all night and then I started puking on the mountain, unfortunately in front of a worker and they made me turn around. So I made it a mile, almost like a mile, a little over a mile up and then back down. So two miles counting it. It's, it is yeah, what it is. It was actually really funny to me when I, cause I woke up when you went to the bathroom and I was like, dang, her poop phobia is so extreme that she literally waited till we went to sleep to go to the bathroom. <laughs> like, I thought it was just you being like shy. And I was mm-hmm. like, that'd be so annoying, like having to just sit there <laughs> waiting until everyone's asleep to go to the bathroom. <laughs> no, just that explosive diarrhea. It's fine. No big deal. But these um, girls crushed it, they did awesome. Yeah, it was really interesting. They also, the people that started the race were the people that run and they fucked up the course and went the wrong way. And so we all climbed the course backwards, which meant we had like the most intense hill of my entire life. And that was really rough. And elevation sickness was for sure kicking in a bit. I'm actually curious if that's why I'm sick because I remember like, when I got off of the mountain, like after like 15 minutes, all of a sudden I was getting like this really heavy pressure in my ear and like really achy, like kind of like sinus infection, achy in my ear, which like I'm prone to sinus infections. I don't know. I don't know why I'm sick. I'm actually really irritated about it, but I'm guessing maybe it has something to do with that elevation and the mountain, but Who knows? I didn't get to go to the witch tonight because I was supposed to have an appointment with her and I was going to be like, Judy, do you know why the fuck I'm sick? But um, she had canceled on me. I think maybe Jude's is sick too. Really? Yeah. That's shocking. And it was like, hey, sorry, last minute. Have to cancel. And I was like, damn, is Judy also sick? Are we both witches and got sick at the same time? Interesting. I, I actually was like really nervous to go because I was like, I don't feel good. And like, I don't want her to be like upset that I'm like kind of sick. But I'm definitely better today than I was on Monday. But I also, I don't know if you remember when I told you that when I got to Judy's the last time, she looked like shit and like was struggling. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I have never seen her look like this and like be this unwell. And I was like, damn, maybe she got me sick. <laughs> well, I saw her on Friday and she was oh, yeah. fine. Yeah, she was totally her. fine. So 
damn. Yeah. I don't know. I was for sure going to ask her like what happened, but yeah. So we climbed a mountain that was really fun. Now we will do it again next year, I suppose. Um, I will definitely train better. Same. I will definitely probably go out and get some actual hiking in before I just do that again, which I mean, it was fine for me, but like, I'm, I'm someone that always wants to be the best. And I was like, okay, I could do better if I tried harder. But you're like <laughs> also like the cardio queen. So yeah. I feel like cardio stuff comes really easily for you. I definitely am going to be training all through the winter, all through the spring. Like it was real, real rough. It was real rough. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, like I don't love cardio, but I have learned to love it. I guess I would say like I have found therapy through it. And also like it's with anything like if I start doing strength training enough, I start to really love strength training. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's just, if you do them, then you become like more into them. So I feel like if I can become more into this next training session, maybe I could perform a little bit better, but like the elevation part, that's what I'm really like, that was really like annoying to me. Like I didn't like how mm -hmm. my head felt and I didn't like that. I was like dizzy and stuff. Um, so that's what I'm hoping to avoid next time. Let me for just sure. put it in perspective for you guys. The first mile was literally straight uphill. We gained 800 feet of elevation in a mile. Like that's how intense it was. I firmly believe if we went the actual course, I definitely could have pushed through my sickness. Like it would have sucked, probably would have shit off the side of a mountain, but I definitely could have pushed through. But that first part was really, really hard. <laughs> Yeah, I think like with our training, I was anticipating like gaining 300 feet of elevation each mile, maybe, or maybe a little bit more. I can't remember. But yeah, that one was super fucked. That was wackadoodle do for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, other than that, um, I just got a matching tattoo with my son. That was really yeah. exciting. Now let's I'm, see like, it. Show the YouTube. Husband. Well, it still has its gross stuff on it. Um, That's all right. Cute. Watching on YouTube, you can see it. We got Cute. his adoption date in Roman numerals, which I think is super adorable. Um, highly recommend doing something like that with your older kids as you get to that age. Because I think it's hard, like his birthday, buying him presents and stuff. It was really weird because you definitely shift into this thing. Like he has a full-time job. He lives at home. He has barely any bills. And it's like, what do you buy them? And so it really starts to become like more about experiences and then also like, what do they actually need? Like I literally got him a freaking manscaped trimmer and I was like, this is fucking weird to get you with your mom. <laughs> like, I was like really tri tripped out. Like I almost wasn't going to do it, but Molly's like, honestly, like, yeah, that's like exactly what guys need. And I was like, so when he opened it, I was like, I know it's kind of weird coming from us, but like, and he's like, no, I've been wanting this. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's weird that Jaden's like a full on adult. It's so weird. Yeah, so that was really fun doing that. Um, other than that, I think I've just been sick. That's been my life. So, oh, I hosted a really fun Halloween craft night. Oh, yeah, that was super fun. Wow, so much so life fun. has happened. I know. Um, like, how long has it been since we podcasted? I'm so confused. A week? Yeah, I guess so. That's so strange. Yeah, the craft yeah. night was so fun. Yeah, that was super fun. Um, I've always wanted to do something like that where you like just have everyone come over and everything's ready to go to craft. If I do it again, which I'm sure I will, like I would definitely do a few things differently, but I still really enjoyed it. And I think that it's fun to do things like that, to get together. Like this would actually be something that will go really well into our podcast episode, like finding different things to do with your friends that I don't know, are just like wholesome and cozy and different because like most of the time we get together and we just like sit around and drink wine and just chat and I thought it was fun like had it having like an activity but then woke up the next day feeling like total ass literally was like do I have a bad hangover like this is so weird like I don't understand why I feel like this and then I like as I got up I was like oh you have so much sinus pain in your face like this is not a hangover which is like at first, I really thought that because like once you hit, I don't know, I think after 31, I and no matter what I drink or how much water, it seems like I have a slight hangover all the time. Same, same. <laughs> if I don't Quite drink water, sad. it's game over. <laughs> yeah. It's also been weird, too, with my sickness. Like, I, it's so hard to drink water when you're sick. Like, I mm -hmm. haven't been sick in so long and I forgot, like, you really do have to force like water intake, which is so weird because normally I drink water 
nonstop, but for some reason when you're sick, like it tastes gross. Oh, no, it doesn't taste nourishing. Like it doesn't, you know, normally when you drink water, you're like, oh, hydration. It feels so good when you're drinking mm-hmm. it. You're like, this water is fucking amazing. While I've been sick, I'm like, barf. It's so weird. <laughs> it's so weird. I have the same thing with food when I'm sick. I have the hardest time eating food when I'm sick. God, I wish I had that problem with any, t- any time in my life, stress, whatever. It d- never is like, I can't eat. Like I fucking love food, <laughs> which is why everybody, I have gained 12 pounds and I'm unwell. Like, I don't know how it's happened from the beginning of the year to now I've gained 12 pounds, which I do need to be mindful of the fact that like, I've been living large, but also I did weigh myself finally when I have been on medicine around the clock, which is probably not a good thing. Cause I do know that like cold medicine makes you bloated. So I'll weigh myself probably next week again, but based on how my clothes have been fitting and how I've been like stuffing myself into them, I for sure have gained some LBs and it's time for your girl to get it together. Cause I'm going on a fucking cruise in like 80 days and (laughs) there's no way I want to feel like this there. I hope that Tampa's okay for her cruise. I really do. (laughs) They're kind of fine. Yeah. Right. Well, our podcast topic. No, I want you to, do you have any other Diddy updates first? Um, you know, I don't think so. Oh, I did hear something that Justin Bieber is going to come out and share his experience. So that's going to be very interesting when that happens. Um, But other than that, there has just been so many people, I guess since we recorded last, there is a lawsuit that Diddy got hit with of 120 people who are accusing him of sexual assault. And I guess I don't know what the lawsuit entails. The articles that I read didn't really say like what it entails, but it did say that the youngest was a nine-year-old little boy. And that makes me feel like I want to puke so gross I did hear on the radio today on the Sirius (laughs) XM um one of the hosts was talking about how um this lawsuit guy the guy that has this lawsuit with all these victims he's actually reached out to a bunch of A-list celebrities and told them that if they had any involvement in it they knew of it or they knew of it and covered it up somehow or never said anything that they need to outside go settle with victims because they're co- like they're coming for them. So like if they go settle with victims now, and so apparently like a bunch of celebrities are doing <laughs> that, which I I don't know how that works or what that looks like, but if that's true, like I bet there's so many celebrities just like scrambling because honestly at the end of the day, so many people knew what was going on, and like I've been seeing so many clips like being dropped of like past interviews where he actually is like openly talking about it, like mm-hmm. on the. <laughs> on the radio the day before they were doing like let's do like this thing where every day we play like a clip of something crazy that was a past interview of Diddy giving us hints and one of them was like him doing an auction and he was giving away three different things and the last one was like a night out with Diddy and he was like and you won't even wake up until Wednesday and I'll be in bed next to you and like laughing Ew. about it but they were like holy shit like he's literally just talking about it and then no one like realized that he was like serious oh my gosh you know that just shows how much power this gross man had that for years like he's been around since I was probably eight seven eight Honestly, years old how old is he I don't know. I think he's in his late fifties. I would assume maybe, no, he couldn't be 60, but like the fact that he's been doing this, the fact that he's been doing this for so long and nothing has come out until right now, 25 plus years later, like, come on, it's gross. I think the thing that's hard and it's hard, like with everything that goes on in our world now is like, you get online and you just see so many different things and you start watching some of these videos on TikTok and then you can clearly be like, okay, this one seems fucking fake. Like people Mm -hmm. just wanting views and searching for things or trying to piece together like old interviews that don't really make sense. And I think that's what like same with these hurricanes. Like I've seen so many like video footages of hurricane stuff. And then people are like that, like in the comments are like, that's not even right now. That's not what that looks like right Mm -hmm. now. So they're like, this is what it looks like right now in Florida. And then people are like, that's not accurate, you know? And so it's like so frustrating because you don't really know what's right, wrong, 
up or down Mm -hmm. and it's just like so confusing and same with the stuff in like North Carolina it's like you're hearing so many things and it's so sad to like know that we live in a world where you can't actually get fucking facts straight (laughs) yes I agree I agree I do know because I do have a friend that currently lives in Asheville and I do know that stuff is really bad there. And I feel just my heart really does go out to them. I know it's stressful too. Cause like Wally and I were just talking about it earlier tonight, how like um, North Carolina is a huge swing state right now with the election. And Mm -hmm. it's like, how are they going to vote and stuff? And it's like all these conspiracies of like this being caused because of the things that people wanted from North Carolina and also the election. Mm -hmm. And it's like, (sighs) <sighs> election year craziness I knew that this year was going to be crazy because this election is so big and politics are such a big thing and I knew that this year was going to be crazy but I didn't expect it to be like this I guess I didn't expect it to be like natural disaster vibes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's going to be really interesting. The hurricane is supposed to hit Florida at about 2 or 3 a.m., the last I heard. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. And I just hope that, you know, it won't be as bad as they're saying it's going to be. But who knows? This also makes me sound like a fucking idiot. And I was going to ask this on my Instagram stories, but I'm just going to ask it now. Maybe you have the answer. When these hurricanes happen and, like, all this water is there, like, are there sea creatures just like in people's towns? Like, oh my God, I up? wondered this too. I don't know because before I went to yoga, I was watching a TikTok about Disney Disney World because they closed. And in the comments, everyone's like, well, what about all the animals in Animal Kingdom? And then that made me think like, there's a shit ton of alligators and stuff in Florida. Like, where do they go? I don't know. Well, yeah. Oh, I didn't even think about the alligators. Oh, I do know the alligators are deaf. Sorry, I don't know why I have this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that um, alligators, I've seen some videos where there's like people are like, be careful once you start walking around afterwards because alligators are like washed up like by their doorsteps and stuff. But it really made me think like all of this water is like coming and dumping and thrashing around. Like do all of the sea creatures go somewhere else and don't get taken in? Because it seems like they would get washed in somehow. Yeah, you would think. Like, I'm so confused and I really need to find out the answer because I started to be like, wait, I feel like sea creatures would get washed up. Yeah, I'll definitely find out this answer because I saw this TikTok like right before I was leaving and I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even think about like zoos or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And so I would definitely find out and let you know because yeah, like you would think like sharks or fish or crabs, like something would be around. I just saw like on Instagram, like this, um, I can't think of the word right now, but it was like, they were doing like a virtual representation of like how high the water would be. So the news person was standing and then like behind her, the screens were like showing how high the water would be and like how high it's supposed to be. And it was expected to get like up to nine feet in one spot and then like higher, like 13 or 15 feet. And like, you can see her standing there and I was sitting there like, but what if there's sharks in that water? <laughs> like yeah and then I was like wait do they even get washed up I don't know maybe they're smart enough to somehow like completely get away but the ocean's so big and the space is so big of where the hurricane is like you'd think with all these waves crashing in that these animals for sure get taken well and can can they go deep enough like because no don't idea. this is also I know nothing <laughs> about animals this would probably be a question for Wally but like dolphins have to come up for air sometimes right like they can't go don't ask me super deep I don't, I don't know. know. We should find <laughs> out. We'll post the answer for you guys once we learn. We'll post it um, <laughs> probably after the episode comes out. We'll post it. Probably but. like Lois, how she always hates our dumb conversations. She's going to be like yelling in her car like you guys are so dumb. <laughs> yeah, we have friends that will be like, I was listening to your episode on the way to work and I was just like screaming at you through my car. <laughs> uh, I'm dumb. <laughs> anyway it's a so valid question note, <laughs> it is i agree <laughs> on that note our episode topic is all about fall and wellness and i don't know just shifting into this new seasonality i actually do love the shift into fall so much so i've been very excited about this episode and i also feel like me getting sick was perfect timing of like oh 
yep you gotta like get your shit together because the new season's happening and it's time to like settle <laughs> yeah I agree I know I mentioned in my um episode I was talking about the fall equinox how much I love fall and love like that transition into the more calm cozy vibes so I'm also very excited about this episode and this topic yeah I feel like what is interesting is like our bodies naturally do start shifting when the weather and the seasons change. Like you can totally see it in like people's schedules, like our schedules start going different directions or the weather starts to make you just start feeling different. And I think we've talked about it a few times before, but like in reality, like your body knows so much more about what's going on with you personally and externally before Mm -hmm. your brain has even like registered that it's happening. So I really do feel like our bodies start to like already transition. I've known a ton of people where their periods are super fucking wacky right now, where like their mental space is super wacky. They're like already kind of feeling a bit of like seasonal depression coming in because they're like thinking about winter and like their vibes have just been off. And it's like, sometimes it's easy to forget that although we're excited about like pumpkin spice and fall and all the like fun vibes, like, we are actually still human beings and have like mental space to protect. And I think that's why I'm excited to talk about this topic because unless you're having friendships or people around you where you can like really have these conversations, we just shift naturally to each season and we don't stop and like think about what is actually happening and find ways to like focus on our wellness and ourselves and embracing like the new season and the change. So yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. And I have been so tired lately. And I really had to like stop and remind myself like this is your body preparing for winter. Like you need to start going to bed earlier. You need to like I'll talk kind of a little bit in a minute, but like take your magnesium so you sleep better and like stuff like that because your body naturally kind of wants to go into more of that hibernation type state. And so like last Monday, I was like, why the hell am I so tired? Like I cannot wake up in the morning. I just want to sleep all day. And it was just like me reminding myself, like we got to honor this space and let our body do what it needs to do because we're just in that transitional phase. Yeah, well, I think that since we're already talking about it, we should talk about like the importance of like prioritizing your rest and like time for reflection, I guess I would say. Like, I don't know. That's what I always think of with fall where it's like I need to like reflect on the year. I'm about to transition. Like we are now in our last 90 days of the year and I start to kind of reflect on like how my year was going, what things kind of threw me off and like how I want to finish strong um and then like also the importance of rest because especially like we've talked about it a million times on the podcast and in person like August is always so insane for us like our birthday month back to school life starts shifting back into like summer's kind of ending and you want to like pack everything in all at once and your body is so exhausted after that and I don't think we ever like sit and think about how much we need to rest from periods of like summer we go hard and Mm -hmm. most people do go hard like summer flies by and then we're just like oh we're supposed to just constantly be ready to go like that's just not how it works and like you really do start to sit and like settle a little bit more you find yourself like wanting to sleep in more because it's cold in your house and like your body's just kind of like yeah we want to just stay here like Mm -hmm. resting is so crucial for fall especially before the holidays hit I think yeah I totally agree Um, I kind of like to see my wellness as like a whole thing, like your physical, your mental, spiritual. So taking that time to reflect, to check in with yourself, as well as kind of changing your workout routine, changing the foods that you're eating, um, all of that kind of falls into my wellness category. And of course, mindfulness is always a thing in my wellness category, but it is so true. You have to take that time to reflect, to start to rest before the holidays come, because it's kind of like restarting that cycle of like the holidays are here. You have so much stuff to do. You have so many people to see. Then all of a sudden January hits and you like crash again. But if you're kind of mindful through all of that, that crash isn't as rough. Yeah. And I think like you can notice it too, like with the daylight, like the sun does start shifting a little bit. It's completely different. And it's natural to start feeling like more natural to the cycle of the sun, which is like what our bodies want to do. So the sun's going to start setting sooner. And so you're going to start being like, wow, I 
like what time is it like it feels kind of late like that every time you're like wow it feels late like that's your body being like hey it's time to wind down like I would highly recommend that you take a look at like what your upcoming schedule looks like and seeing if you can find ways to like stop being so busy not putting so many things on your calendar winding down earlier like getting ready to relax a lot sooner because you have been staying up late because of summer like in the summer we would sometimes eat dinner at like 9 p.m which is so weird for us not for you but like <laughs> yeah that's for normal for us because it was still <laughs> light outside you know like we usually would be like oh crap it's time to eat because the sun started to go down and like that's when we would eat and so it's like finding ways to remind yourself that you need to wind down earlier and get ready for bed sooner because like fall really does come crashing in. I feel like on your body and you start to be like this exhausted person of like, holy shit, like the last couple months have been crazy. I'm exhausted. And if you just keep like neglecting it, you will get into like this extreme state of burnout because the holidays will hit and you'll be constantly busy again. But like create your sleep routine. Like Taylor was saying, she takes her magnesium, like figure out what works for you. Maybe that's being off of your phone, using your blue light glasses. Like, I don't know. I would also say too, like something I love to do before I like jump into my last 90 days is I really like, like I said, reflect on the year, but I also like to kind of go down memory lane of like everything that I accomplished and like got to experience at the beginning of the year, because I want to like, let that carry me into the end of the year of like, wow, I'm really ending this. And like, I don't need to worry about creating all these like crazy experiences because it's just like being present with people is how I feel like the last part of my year goes and I like to be like okay I don't need to travel like I don't need to have all these travel plans and I because I'm always feeling like I need to travel or like be doing something like epic and so I feel like when I reflect on everything that I've already done I can be like okay cool like I can just settle and like have chill moments the rest of the year and I could also like take time to be appreciative for everything and give myself grace for gaining 12 fucking pounds or whatever it is you know like falling off my financial budgeting and all of those things because it's like wow look at all these cool experiences I did and I don't need to beat myself up for being in this place because like I lived life and I like to do that and I can like rebuild again and it's like that's like you were saying like change your workout routine that's me now like I'm changing the foods I'm eating I'm changing like my workout routine like getting it back together because I for sure lost it <laughs> yeah and um with changing your foods, a big thing, because I'm a big farmer's market girl, I buy in the summer, I literally buy almost all of my groceries at the farmer's market. So when those go away, that's really, really hard and sad for me. Um, but eat seasonally as much as you can. Like that stuff will even be cheaper at the grocery store. And hello, we're in a recession. Like we need cheaper groceries. So really like eat seasonally as much as you can. Right now in the fall, we have like a really good seasonal vegetable situation happening. So yeah, kind of there's so much information on Instagram. And I know that Shelby and I share them a lot on our Instagram page, like the foods that are in for the season or for the month, but that will really help. And your body wants that too, because it's again, natural things that are happening, natural things that are grown at this time. So your body will want that too. And I've really focused a lot on my nutrition this past year. And I am telling you, I have really noticed a very big difference in my body doing this. Yeah. Some of the like superfoods I would say for fall would be pumpkin is obviously a huge thing. Um, you could just get pumpkin chocolate chip cookies, but I don't recommend only eating those. <laughs> um, there's sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes will start to be like a huge, like they're going to be in the stores a lot. Potatoes, especially too. And then like squash. I'm not a huge squash gal. Um, I can have it in like a little bit, but what's hard for me is my family is so picky one thing that they do eat the shit out of is apples, which is a huge fall item too. But there's always like a list on the internet that you can find of like what fall foods are in season. And those are the ones that are going to be the cheapest at the grocery store. So that's definitely what you should look out for. But also like think about how you can get your vegetables into like a soup or something that's cozier because like now is the season to stop having like a sandwich and like the colder foods because it's hot outside like now we're in cozy season so think about like healthy recipes that are gonna have those veggies and like I'm a huge soup person but my family fucking hates it so again it's like really shitty for me but it's good to have those foods like they just kind of help your body like calm down and they're super full of like 
hearty ass thing. So you're not mm-hmm. eating terribly. Like you're not craving all these things or feeling hungry because like soup is so filling. <laughs> And you can honestly mask the taste of so many vegetables in a soup. Like I make this really good Tuscan soup that has leek in it. I've never had a leek. I don't think I would like a leek like by itself, but in this soup, it's so delicious. So there's so many ways that you can trick your body and your brain into thinking that you're not eating vegetables, even though you are eating vegetables with a soup. I love soup season so much. Well, and I think what's even more important with like eating the superfoods, like we're now entering the cold seasons of the year, which is then going to make you get sick. Hello, me. Mm-hmm. Um, and by eating the certain foods that have the nutritional value of like what's in season for fall, like your body's going to be able to combat those things so much easier. Um, and like you just need to start paying attention to those, like be mindful about those things. I also, I don't know, it's so annoying because the holidays come up and like there's so many things and so many food opportunities because like I love food, but it's always around this time of year. I'm like, all right, I got to get it together because I go so hard in the summer and I'm like, it's so stupid that I pick this time of the year to always be like, okay, I need to be better with my eating because Christmas, Halloween, Thanksgiving, all of them are coming up, but it's like, you really do have to be careful because if you don't get it together you'll gain all the holiday lbs and like i'm trying not to do that <laughs> so i love that you brought that up because i actually have a list for us because again Ooh. dialing in on my nutrition i mean i still have a ton of ways to go but that was like a really big focus for me for this year so i have some tips that can help you really focus on your nutrition through like this season through the end of the year So start really easy. I started tracking my food. So you don't have to stick with this all the time, but if you track your food for a solid two weeks, everything that you eat, like we don't have to have other people see what we're tracking. So don't cheat yourself out of it. Like really track what an average day of eating looks like for you. See how many calories you're eating. See how much protein you're eating. See how much water you're drinking. And that really will be a tangible thing that you can look at and be like, hey, this is where I need to improve. So once I started doing that, I started adding one vegetable to my dinner. So broccoli, asparagus, those are big. Me and Tony are really big fans of those things. So that was super easy to add that into dinners. And then you can start adding different vegetables as you move on, but start with one or two vegetables that are green that you really like and add those into just your dinner. So just one meal a day, adding something green and then move into replacing one dinner a week with a big salad. Tony and I call it our big ass salad. We just have lettuce and we pack it full of vegetables. We put the Costco chicken on top and just like whatever dressing. And we replace that once a week, one dinner a week with just this big ass salad. And now we honestly do that too, sometimes three times a week because it's super easy, but it's so filling too. So that was my next step. And then make sure that you are drinking water throughout the day because water will really help you flush everything out. I always, always, always start my morning with a big glass of water. I do it after I brush my teeth and tongue scrape. And then I just immediately take a big glass of water. Um, I started cooking or eating protein first thing in the morning. That really helps fill you up. So that will also help you not overindulge and make a food plan for the week. That has really been life-changing for me as well. I grocery shop one day a week and I have that food plan for the week. It's really nice when we get off of work and we're like, oh, we don't want to cook dinner, but it's already figured out, always already kind of prepped for us. So those are my tips for nutrition for this season. I think those are really good. The only thing I would add into that too is like also incorporating more vitamins and like maybe teas because you're not going to be getting the normal vitamins you would get from like the sun, especially in the winter and fall. Um, And so having vitamin D, like I thought because I'm a sun chaser, like my vitamin D levels were fine. And the witch was like, girl, your vitamin D levels are so low. So I take a vitamin D supplement now, Um, but vitamin C, zinc, those are really important. Magnesium, like Taylor said, I mean, honestly, most people should be taking magnesium anyways, Mm -hmm. but I would say adding vitamins for sure and then I also in the fall like to switch to drinking like a tea before bed 
And because I'm not a huge tea girl to begin with, I don't really like hot beverages for the most part. And tea sometimes tastes like fucking asshole. So I prefer to not have it very often. But in the fall, for some reason, I really like start. Like, I don't know. It's like I'd shift into this like different version of me sometimes in the fall. But yeah, I think that those are really good wellness tips for sure. Yeah, I totally agree with the tea thing. Tea is so amazing for you. And if you have a cold, there's an herb called an herb, maybe it's called mullein, but that's really good. If you have like a cold and you need to like flush things out, if you mix that with peppermint, that's like a really good tasting, super healthy tea. And definitely with the supplements, if you live in the state of Utah or somewhere that has a winter, you have to be on a vitamin D supplement. Your vitamin D levels are low, like plain and simple. Vitamin D is a definite must vitamin D, the supplement and vitamin D, the dick. (laughs) <laughs> just kidding literally both um, <laughs> we will also do a better job at sharing like our recipes because I think fall recipes can be a bit tricky so mm-hmm. I think we will both try and like focus on sharing a little bit more about that because I think that like I find a lot of inspiration when people post stuff like sometimes it's really hard to like figure out what I want to eat or what do I want to put on my meal plan like it's hard to always scratch the surface. Like, I feel like we just ate that. So I actually have made like a note in my phone of like meals that my family normally will eat. So whenever I'm making my meal plan, I'll just like see the list and be like, okay, like let's have this or I'll add these ones. And I think what I would add to with like how Taylor's schedule is like once a week, I grocery shop based off my meal plan. That helps you save so much freaking money. Like when I meal plan and I buy the groceries I need for the meals I'm cooking, like we aren't running to the store constantly because we decided we want to eat this or we realize we're out of this. Like I get the basics and I always just get what I need for those meals. And it has saved my grocery budget. I mean, groceries are still freaking out of control, but it makes it so I don't buy the things that I don't need. And then we're not wasting like vegetables or food that we had bought, like thinking I would make that. And then we just didn't prioritize it. Cause if you don't put it on your plan, more than likely you'll buy the groceries of what you think you might make And then you don't get to it. Like you just decide you're lazy. Like life is busy and it's hard. And unless it's on the menu, usually you don't make it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I'll definitely share more too, because you can also like in a single week, like say you need heavy whipping cream for a recipe, but you only need a fourth of a cup, but you have another recipe that uses a half of a cup, like have those meals in the same week so that you can use the same thing. And that will also help you save money with groceries. Like really take the time. It takes like 30, maybe 40 minutes to plan out your meal plan and make your grocery list. But in the end, it is literally life-saving. Yeah. And like for me, I do all my grocery shopping like delivery. So it's been even easier for me to not overspend because like I make the meal plan and then I get it on my computer and I order my groceries for delivery. And if they don't give me something, then sure, I can run to the store and grab it. But I know I only need those things and I'm not tempted to just like wander around and buy extra stuff. Actually, grocery delivery has been like so helpful for my life. I remember my therapist asking why I didn't do it. And it was like this weird sense of control. I thought shopping was like therapeutic for me. I thought going to the grocery store was like a therapy for me, but then like I realized it was actually really exhausting. Like once I got done, I was actually really tired from it. And then also having to put them away and bring them inside. Like I realized like my energy levels were kind of like irritated and I was like, okay, maybe I should try it. And it actually worked out quite nice for myself. So if you were like me, I mean, like I said, I really thought I enjoyed grocery shopping. I love wandering up and down each and every aisle and finding random shit. But by the time I was done, I was like gassed out and even more irritable. So maybe if you have those same feelings, you should try grocery delivery. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, The other thing I wanted to talk about too with like seasonal fall wellness tips is <coughs> being outside as much as you can while the weather is still nice. Like that is something that I think we start to kind of take for granted as like we shift into fall. And right now in Utah, like we're luckily having like some pretty decent weather it's so crucial that we still take advantage of it and get that morning sunlight whenever we can, or just like breathe the crisp air. Like I love breathing fall air so much Mm -hmm. and going on like a nice walk. Like you can go on a walk in the afternoon and you're not dying of heat. Like it is actually the best. And I think it's really important that you like still get that connection with nature, which is like 
I feel like such a fucking crunchy granola saying that like that's not my vibe but I truly do know that like there's so many things in my life that always say like get out in nature get out in nature and when I do that like my mental space and my body and my mind and everything just feels so much better and I like to not think about it as like a crunchy thing I like to think about it different but it just seems weird to be like go outside (laughs) (laughs) it's so true you guys know that I harp about like grounding and being outside it's a huge thing and I want to piggyback on Shelby and say be outside as much as you can for the rest of the year we are so afraid of like being out in the snow and being cold it's actually kind of good for your body and your mind to be cold even if it's just for a minute like there's a reason why cold plunging is such a huge thing because it is kind of good for your body to be cold So getting sunlight as soon as the sun comes up has been a huge thing for me and for Tony. I've made Tony start doing it and it really transforms your whole day. Like just go stand in the sun as soon as the sun is out in the morning, all throughout the winter, even if it's cold, put on a coat, put on some boots, go stand in the sun, get those nice rays on your skin. So don't like hunker down and be inside all day during the winter, like still find ways to get outside. I went snowshoeing last year, found out I actually really love snowshoeing. I'm really excited to go snowshoeing this year and still be like outside and up in the mountains. So there are still things that you can do outside even if it's just for five minutes, but always get your grounding and your nature in. I would say too, like, don't count like going outside, running your errands as being outside. Like don't Mm -hmm. count running into the grocery store as your outside time. Like you need to be outside, just like chilling, like go stand outside in your driveway or your backyard and just like breathe the air, have the quietness. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. Oh my God. I love it so much when you walk outside and it's snowed and it's suddenly so fucking quiet in your neighborhood. And it feels like you can hear literally nothing and it's so cold and like your lungs just like get filled with it and you can just hear nothing. It's one of my favorite things. Like those are the types of things, like that's the mental clarity and peace that like we need not walking inside a store. Like that doesn't count as like getting Mm -hmm. outside. That doesn't count at all. (laughs) And your outdoor time, leave your phone in the house, leave your phone at your desk. Like do not bring your phone outside with you unless like you're going on a walk, then yes, have your phone, but like, don't be on it really like use that time to just disconnect from the outside world and just really tune into nature. Yeah. Um, the other thing I like to do in the fall, which I've already kind of started doing (laughs) randomly. I didn't realize I was until like this morning is decluttering and reorganizing a lot of spaces like this morning I moved a mirror in my bedroom before I jumped on meetings I went in Henley's room and like got rid of like a whole bunch of things like randomly like I walked in it's because my cleaning lady was coming and I was like tidying up a little bit anyways yes I'm one of those people that does that and I was in her closet and I was like why the fuck do we still have these dresses from dance like there's no reason for her to have all these dance dresses. She's never going to wear them again. She can't fit into them. You can't donate them to places because they never want them. We don't know anyone else that we can give them to. So I literally was like, I'm taking them out of her closet. This is so stupid. Packed them all up, put them in a bag. I'm going to give them to my mom. She can give them to the neighbor kids that like play dress up or something. Like, I don't know. I just started noticing, like I've started to just like purge a lot and like reorganize or declutter and I think that that's like you could do it in the spring and you do it in the fall and I kind of just didn't realize I'd already started so it's funny that you bring that up because in like the witch world um it's natural for you to want to cleanse your spaces because it brings in like to do it with the season changing because it brings in that new energy that's already naturally coming in so I'm a witch guys just kidding (laughs) um but no I don't know like there's just really something to a tidy space and like having I don't know a calm area and like it's time for cozy season so in my mind I'm like no I don't want clutter I want less chaos like all these things and I think it's really important all the time to do these things but like Taylor's saying do it when the season change or something but figure out like what's going on in your house that's been irritating you or a space that you've just been ignoring and like just cleanse it because the mental space that you're like taking up by just knowing it's there and being irritated by it or like shoving stuff around it like I'm telling you you don't realize it in the moment but it really bothers you and it weighs on you every time you look at it your brain is thinking about it so like just get rid of it and like 
open that up because something new could come into your brain by cleansing that space. So true. And I will forever die on the hill that part of wellness is having clean house, clean car. Like if you do not have these places that you spend time in, if you don't have them clean and tidy, you will feel chaotic in your brain. I will die on that hill for the rest of my life. A clean house is a happy house. A clean car is a happy drive. Like you have to, your wellness should include cleanliness. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's scientifically proven that like your environment is like, it will bring that energy into you. So if you want a calm and like chill space like energy like your space has to be that way like you need to have a sense of calm and control over what you have and like I don't know why people don't do it I'm I have issues really though like I'm actually a bit extreme with it but I'm okay with it. <laughs> like I'm okay with it like my son his room complete disaster there's clothes always all over I like his door is just always shut I never have to see it but when I do see it I'm immediately like how do you live in this like I know this affects you I would go crazy mm-hmm um, the other thing I want to talk about is your fucking skincare in the fall. Yes. I'm yes. already struggling with it heavily. Like I started noticing it like two weeks ago, probably where I was like, God, my lips are so dry. Like my hands are so dry. My face is so dry. Like what is going on? I feel like I'm going through my moisturizer so fast. My hair, I always notice it in my hair too. It starts to get mm-hmm. like dry. Um, it's super crucial to hydrate. Like we already talked about drinking water. That's You already have to be doing that, but that's not enough for transitioning into this like season. You have to be like hydrating your skin, making sure that you're moisturizing and like seriously doing anything you can. Like your hair, you could do a hair mask to like get some hydration back into it. Like don't dry out. (laughs) Yeah. Honestly, castor oil is going to be your best friend through this transition. I usually only castor my face a few times a week. I've been doing it every day because my skin is so dry. Dyeing my hair red at this transition phase was really dumb because I get a really dry scalp and you can constantly see like dry skin in my hair because red shows everything. But this is so true. Like castor oil is great for um, hydration for your skin. The moisturizer that Shelby uses, the what's it called? Uncommon James. Yeah, that one's so dope. So dope. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I use um beef tallow from Primarily Pure. I use that because I have extreme dry skin. And yeah, Botox also helps my dry skin. So I'm definitely telling that I'm ready for my Botox appointment because my forehead is so dry. But find what works for you. And yeah, skincare. Amazing. I also just got from Dime Beauty, uh, like, whew, there's a fruit fly flying. In my I face. have one around me too. That's why I keep like grabbing. I'm trying to get it. Oh my gosh. I hate, fr- I have so many fruit flies. <laughs> so do I. Driving me crazy. So do I. Um, but I just got from Dime Beauty. It's like a, I don't know the word of it right now, but it's like a mist, like a hydrating mist. And you could put mm-hmm. it on like, you put it on before bed, before you put your moisturizer on, but you can also use it throughout the day to just like rehydrate your face. And it's been really, really nice. I used it last night this morning and this afternoon because like I said my skin's like really dry and then also castor oil doesn't work for me like that did literally zero shits for me like I don't know what that's about for other people but it doesn't work on me um (laughs) my biggest thing is like eye masks making sure that I have like a good eye mask and then like a hydrating face mask I do that once a week and then I use my um red light therapy mask that has also helped me be able to like retain moisture a lot more I usually only use it like twice a week the rest of the year but I've been using it like almost every day and it's been way helpful so those are the things I do I also I mean this doesn't really tie into like um skincare but I also really really enjoy like a self-care vibe in the fall I love taking baths and like being warm and cozy um I can't wait to get a red light sauna downstairs in my basement because that will be like a huge thing that I'll do but like I think find things that are like going to be like cozy self-care vibes for you because like this is the season to really care for yourself I feel like I truly yeah, believe that I definitely like, agree winter is like winter spring you start to get like excited 
excited for like warm weather and you like have this new energy to do all these other things I feel like fall is when I'm like I just want to be cozy I want to relax I want to like unwind reflect on my year think about everything and just chill Mm -hmm. (laughs) like I I really always feel like I need that (laughs) yeah um, another part of my wellness is keeping my brain engaged. So not only am I in school, which that's going to, of course, keep my brain engaged, but reading. I really, really, really love to read. And it keeps your brain just so engaged and read it like an actual book. I know like Kindle's and Audible. I'm a huge Audible fan. I am always listening to a book, but there is nothing like cozying up in a nice cozy blanket with a fire and just reading a book and just using that time to just really engage with your brain. I mean, honestly, reading an actual book is so good for your brain. Mm -hmm. Like it's insane. We get so used to being on our phones or just listening to things. And if you want to be a sharp old lady or old man, you should definitely read things. Yes. I really like to play Sudoku. Do you? (laughs) Yeah. So like, I really like to have like a Sudoku book around and just like sometimes Mm. take a break playing that. I'm that old lady. I don't want to do puzzles. I want to do Sudokus. (laughs) I really like um, crossword puzzles. I love crossword puzzles. I think that they're so fun, but I didn't know you like Sudoku. That's going to be us in the old folks' homes. I'll be doing a Sudoku (laughs) and you'll be doing a crossword. Yes, I love it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm trying to think if I have anything else. I don't know if I have anything else. I don't know. I think I've said it a million times, like take this time to just relax, like get your shit together because come middle of November through the end of the year, like the last 45 days of the year, always absolutely insane. And Mm -hmm. you really only have maybe 45 days of fall where you can actually just like settle, start prepping for the new year, like get your shit back together, figure out what you want, like all of the things, like take a beat, just chill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The last thing I want to touch on is of course, mental health. Um, Don't be afraid to reach out to a therapist. I know a lot of people are struggling right now a little bit earlier than we've seen before with the seasonal depression. So therapy is a big thing that should be a part of your wellness and any like extra things like how we go see Judy and get like our treatments with Judy. Um, I love going to like sound baths, to yoga, to any of like those type of event type things are really good for your mental health. So not only taking care of yourself physically, but also that mental aspect because seasonal depression is such a real thing and should definitely be addressed when you feel like you have it. Yeah, you guys could go to Taylor's Moon Circles to get all of these vibes. We're also doing an event in November. You guys could come to that. She's teaching. It's in Utah County if you're local. Mm -hmm. And she's going to be teaching at that and we'll have a booth. But like find things that you like. I don't know. For me, a sound bath actually would sound be so dope. Like in a nice cool breeze outside in the fall. That would be dope. Mm, yeah, for sure. Sound baths for me, I like. I just lay love there. them. Yeah, I they're so nice for sure. <laughs> they're so nice, but it's not <laughs> like a like, sleep sleep. It's like a. I mean, I feel pretty close else, kind of. I feel like for me, my biggest thing is like I need rest and relaxation, and that shit puts me to sleep so fast. <laughs> <laughs> um. Do you have anything else? Nope. I think that's it. Okay. Well, we have an asking for a friend and I'm so excited because we have answers from our listeners. This week's hashtag asking for a friend. If you only wear your underwear for a few hours, then shower, is it okay to wear them again or like put them back on? Should we read the answers first or us answer first? We should share yours. We should share ours first. Listen, you guys know how I feel about socks. I feel the same way as underwear. No, do not rewear your underwear. If it has been on your body, I don't care if it's been for 30 minutes. No, it needs to be changed. We don't rewear socks. We don't rewear underwear. Like, so sorry, but no. Yeah, honestly, I don't know if there's ever a scenario where you should. I mean, obviously, if you went to like a massage or a doctor or somewhere and you had to take your underwear off and put it back on, which I fucking hate doing that. 
Like I hate it. I too. hate doing it so so much. But like those are the only times when you sh- should do something like that <laughs> because like otherwise you need to throw your underwear away, um, or bring a spare. I don't know. But like absolutely not. Don't do it. I do think you can rewear your socks. I will die on that fucking hill. If you don't have stinky feet and you feel like rewearing your socks you can do that. I believe in that. But, um, yeah, don't fucking rewear your underwear, especially after you showered. Yeah. Like your vagina has things that come out. It has things around it. Like, listen, it's, it doesn't need to, it's juicing for random reasons all the freaking time. Like (laughs) it might not be a lot of juice, but there's juice. It's sweat or juice. Something's going on. Stop it. Just how it is. It's juicing that. <laughs> sounds so gross. Okay, let's see what the <laughs> listeners say. Ugh. No, never. No. No, absolutely not. LOL. No. Nope. Change them. They were on your dirty body. I cannot. And I have daytime underwear and sleeping underwear. Um, another one. No, you're dirty before you shower therefore you are dirty if an emergency i guess fine no depends on what i was doing to be honest okay a little, <laughs> little concerned about that one that's okay <laughs> um no new underwear is an absolute must no clean lady bits equal clean panties um no unless you are just showering because you got something on you or something honestly i would still say no i don't care if you had just put them on and suddenly <laughs> had to shower like sucks for your laundry day um and then another no with like a million exclamation points <laughs> so it seems i'm like, glad that we're all on the same page with this yeah i mean <laughs> there's a couple where like maybe not but i feel like for the most part they also agree and yeah, yeah i just truly don't think you should do that that's disgusting Yeah, I totally agree. There's been times because I have heavy periods that I've leaked my tampon and I've literally just thrown my underwear away in the little garbage that you put your tampons in because I'm not putting those back on my body like they are dirty and I don't want to carry dirty underwear in my purse. So bye. Yeah, honestly, the amount of times I've like thrown underwear away for random reasons is just stupid. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But like, I'm not putting on dirties. No, no. Oh no, it's just, I mean, that's how you get like infections too. You want to know what's actually the worst? There's been times where I've been like working out, like running and I'll be at home and I need to go poop because I'm in the middle of a run and like running makes you poop. So I'll have to stop my run, go upstairs and go to the bathroom, but my underwear is all sweaty and then I have put them back on. I I have put them back on, but like. I have done that too. I'm working out and like, I'm just accepting it, but like I cringe every single time. And that is the only time that I, and when I do that, I immediately have to shower after my workout. Like there's no, like, I feel gross. Honestly, anytime you work out, you should change your underwear. Even if you don't have time to shower because like, it's actually really bad for the lady down there. It is. We need to protect our little lady. So yeah, I mean, they're not cute, but you gotta protect them. (laughs) All right. Well, I think that's our episode. So thank you guys so much for listening. If you have any fall wellness tips that you would like to share with us that we can share with the collective, please let us know. We would love to hear them and share with a friend and we will talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye.